Well, as promised, let's talk about variables. Yeah, we had literals in Python, and now we have variables where the value can change, as we're going to see. So, variables are a key part of Python, as you've already seen, and the first thing that we need to understand is there are some naming rules when it comes to variables in Python. We need to begin are variable names a very special way. Now, variable names can contain uppercase and lowercase letters as well as digits and the underscore character. But as I said, variable names must begin with a letter or the underscore character. Yeah, so we'll give some examples here in a moment of variable names that would not be acceptable by Python. And sure enough, it would be an example would be a variable name that begins with a digit. Also, variable names are case sensitive. I'll give you an example of this here momentarily, but this is very important for us to remember. So if I have a variable named VAR, all lowercase, this is completely different from VAR, all uppercase. And we have to watch out for those keywords that are used in Python. Now, what's pretty funny about this is, thanks to the case sensitivity, you actually could get away with using keywords as variable names, but my goodness, I would never want to do this. Yeah, think about the if keyword. We know this is going to be very, very important inside of Python for our programmatic logic, the if statement is so critical to us. And if I come in here and try and set a variable named if equal to 100, sure enough, I'll get an error. And that error is because if is a reserved keyword as we have discussed in a previous lesson. Now, if I were to say if equals 100, notice that Python has no problem with that. Would I ever do such a thing? Of course not. I'm going to respect the fact that if is a reserved keyword and I am not going to create a variable that is named that way. Now, let's see some valid examples, therefore, of variable names. How about my variable? Sure, that would work. How about T1020? Sure, that would work. How about exchange underscore rate? Yeah, no problem. How about underscore test? How about simply X? Sure, these are all variable names that will work for us in Python. I don't like any of them though, because not a single one of these, maybe except for the last one, uh, really honors some best practices that we'll discuss in our next video when it comes to doing our naming conventions in Python. So I wouldn't, I don't even like X because of course it's not self-commenting. It's just too generic as to what it might mean. But suffice it to say, all of these five examples we see before us, they're all perfectly valid. Now, what about invalid? Well, how about 40x? Yeah, can't do that. Can't begin with a number. How about exclamation my ver? Nope, can't do that. Can't begin uh, with that exclamation point. Nope. How about exchange space rate? No, we can't do that. We can't have a space in the variable name. So these are examples that would get us into trouble in our Python code. Now, something else to realize about Python and your variables is that we have a system that's called implicit declaration, meaning we just pop up and say, hey, I've got a variable called my underscore variable and its value is 10. Notice we don't have to explicitly declare the my underscore variable. We can just immediately create that variable and set it equal to something. 
Notice the something is going to be dictated by what we set the variable equal to. Here we can see we set it to the integer of 10. So sure enough, the my variable variable will contain an integer value of 10. When we print that, it will be printed as that integer value of 10. By the way, if I pop up and say my underscore variable equals quote 10 end quote, now, of course, it looks the same, but we're actually storing a string in the variable, my underscore variable. So notice, inside of Python, we have what's called implicit variable declaration, as I said, meaning we can create them at any point and their contents will dictate the format, right? Sure, of how that value is stored. On the left, we see an integer. On the right, we see a string. Uh, Python doesn't care. And we don't have to go through some explicit declaration of, okay, we want you to create a variable called my underscore variable, and it's going to be used to eventually store an integer. No, we don't have to explicitly declare our variables inside of Python. Now, let's review with a quick point here why would we get an error if we did this? My underscore variable equals 10 and then print my underscore variable? Well, notice we have the case sensitivity issue here. And this also proves to us that while we can implicitly declare a variable, in order for Python to work with a variable, we must have implicitly declared it. Yeah. So why this is failing is the case sensitivity, but think really just of the fact that what Python is really saying with that print statement is, hey, there is no my underscore variable with this exact name. Yeah, the uppercase M and the uppercase V. Yeah, so poor Python can't, do anything with a var variable that has not been implicitly declared. Now, what about assigning new values to our variables? Well, that is no problem at all. Notice here, I have my underscore variable equals 10, and then I have my underscore variable equals my underscore variable plus one. If we print the value of my variable, sure enough, we will see that it is printing 11. Yeah, I know this will look strange to a mathematician, by the way, right? We can never take a variable and say it equals that variable plus something else. That doesn't make sense from a mathematical standpoint. It just really goes to show you how in Python, a variable is like a box to store a value and that can easily be changed. So we'll see where incrementing your variable in this manner is so popular. There's actually a special mathematical operator we have to shorthand that as I'll show you in an upcoming video. But notice, yeah, assigning new values, no problem. Here's another example of that. My underscore variable I could say is equal to 100, but then I could say my underscore variable is equal to 200 plus 300. When I print this answer, what is it going to be? What's the variable going to be? It'll be 500. Yeah, the variable was initially set to an integer of 100, then it was set to 200 plus 300, so its latest uh, value that will be printed is the number 500. Well, variables are very, very important. And you heard me mention that there is great naming conventions that we should take advantage of throughout all of Python. And there's other best practices I want you to take advantage of when you are writing and working with Python code. And that's what we're going to explore in the very next video. I'll see you there.